So today we're going to be doing a quick unboxing of the Antec Cooler H20 920. So this is a thicker style radiator with push-pull fans as well as a low profile CPU block slash pump unit. So let's see what Antec has to say for themselves. They're saying it's next generation maximum performance. Okay, you have PWM control, zero maintenance as well as a quick installation system. It is compatible with 775, 1155, 1156, 1366, AM2, AM3, AM2+, AM3+, so pretty much every socket under the sun these days. Here we go, fan speed. Here's all of your general specs, which are naturally covered by a sticker. Thanks for that. Let's go, go ahead, bro. Move that there, sticker. There we go. All right, so now we can see the specs. So there's your fan speed from 700 to 2400 RPM. Radiator dimensions. So the thickness of this rad is 49 millimeters. That's the important one. Fans, these are your standard 120 by 25 mil fans. Cold plate height, tubing length, okay, none of this is probably going to be that relevant. That weight, this is an interesting one, so it's 1.6 pounds. And the great thing about these self-contained liquid cooling units is that if you ever have to ship or move your system around, most of that weight is strapped to the case, unlike a heatsink where all of the weight is going to be hanging off the CPU socket. So there's a customizable RGB LED um, on the... Uh, CPU block itself, so you can actually change the color of that. That's pretty cool through the software. Uh, PWM uh, radiator fans, okay. Included software provides essential tools to control and monitor the cooler H2O, including coolant temperatures. Okay, that's pretty neat. And non-corrugated easy bend tubes. So that's something that we have not seen before on these pre-done liquid cooling setups. So I will definitely be commenting on what kind of tubing they're using and what I think of it. I've been water cooling for, uh, wow, I guess it's been almost like seven years. So I do have a fair bit of experience with tubing and blocks. All right, here's the insides. Actually, one more thing on the outside of the box. So lower CPU temperatures are better. Okay, thanks for stating the obvious, Mr. Graf. Uh, CPU core temp, so here's the Intel air cooler. Here's a first generation liquid cooler, so they're saying it's around 70 degrees, and they're saying the cooler H2O is more like a 60 degrees. And that's on an i7-980X at 100% load. So I'm not sure exactly which first generation cooler they're comparing to, but uh, presumably it's one of the slightly thinner ones, uh, such as an Asetek LCLC. Uh, here we have an installation guide, although I should be able to figure out how this mounts relatively easily. Uh, we have a Chill Control V version 1.0 software thing, so you can probably download that from the Antec website. We have mounting hardware. So this is pretty straightforward. We've seen this before. Hey, this is neat. So uh, Corsair had a similar system with the H50 and the H70, but you can see now, instead of it just the plastic bits just all being black, they're color-coded, green for AMD, blue for Intel. So that is a nice touch. And then we've got hold downs for AMD, as well as hold downs for Intel, and then all of the little hardware bits that we need. All right, let's take out the radiator, CPU block, and pump. And then let's go ahead and take out the fans. One of my biggest complaints about the uh, the Corsair fans was that they just didn't seem very well built. They're kind of flimsy um, and they're pretty loud. So these look a little bit better constructed. I mean, Antec's been making fans for about three million years. So I'm sure they've got fans figured out. Uh, overall, the frame feels quite good. It's more like in line with the Coolit fans that they were using on the, uh, on the Eco, as well as the Vantage. So here we go, got another fan, looks just like that, lots of blades, probably optimized for static pressure, and the reason for that would be this. So you can see it's quite a dense fin arrangement here, so that means that rather than optimizing the fan for CFM, that is straight airflow in an unrestricted environment, you want to optimize a fan for static pressure, so that is in a restricted environment, how much air can it force through said restricted environment. So here you can see how uh, thick the radiator is. And uh, here, why don't we do why don't we do the classic iPhone comparison? Oh, I think I just showed crazy Russian. Oh well, it's all good. He's not really that much of a secret anyway. You can find pictures of him on the NCIX Facebook. Account. And I'm not that much of a crazy either. Okay, okay. okay. All right, you're not. Crazy. <laughs> Um, okay, Antec 920. Oh, okay, here's a hint as to who the OEM might be for this. It's right on there. Can you read that? Yeah, yes, no, 
Yes? Okay. All right, so here are the Easy Flex tubes or whatever it is they're calling them. And actually, these are nice. Look at that. So these are using very thick, thick walled tubing. So this is still one quarter inch tubing, but just uses an incredibly thick wall. So that gives you this crazy bend radius where you could basically take it and bend it like this and like that and all in a circle and it's still not going to collapse. So this is uh, outstanding actually. That is definitely a benefit of using the Cooler 920. So here is the pump and, ah, uh, sorry, just gotta, Pull that off there. There we go. Here is the pump and block combo unit. So that's where the uh, custom RGB lighting is going to come from. And uh, there's the cooler branding. These are rotatable. So you can actually position it quite easily according to uh, which way the tubing is coming in so that you don't have undue stress on the tubing or on the fittings. All right, here on the bottom you can see the copper base as well as the pre-applied thermal compound that is a high quality thermal compound so I wouldn't feel the need to replace it unless you are um, taking it off and you need to reapply thermal compound to your CPU. So you've got a bunch of cables coming off this guy, all black thankfully. That is, uh, that is excellent because the CPU socket can get very cluttered very quickly if you have a bunch of brightly colored cables around it. But we've got one USB so that's going to be for the monitoring software. We we have, and that's a USB header, so that'll plug directly into your motherboard. And then we have, hmm, oh, neat. Okay, so the whole unit gets powered off of a single three pin. So what you're able to do, oh, this is great. So check this out. Okay, guys, so here's how this works. Your fans use their four pin PWM plugs to plug into this splitter right here. Okay, the PWM control is all done at the controller level within the CPU block. So what that means is that the Antec software does all of that control without any intervention from the motherboard, and that really provides a way for Antec to control the end user experience much better because a lot of motherboards have control schemes that are drastically different from, different from each other. So this way Antec can accurately report the noise level of the system as well as the temperatures from one simple interface via USB. So this guy provides power to the whole deal. Now I probably wouldn't recommend plugging this into your CPU fan header on your motherboard. I'm not sure what Antec has to say about that in the instructions, but three fans and a pump um, seems to me like it might be a little much. Maybe I'm mistaken though. Maybe they're going to say that you should plug it into uh, the CPU fan header. Yes they do. Okay they say the CPU fan header is uh, perfectly capable of handling it. Remember, USB is going to be providing power to some parts of some aspects of this as well. So maybe they've got some kind of distribution system where it's not going to affect things negatively, but there you go. So thank you for checking out my unboxing of the Antec Cooler H20920. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.